Hey guys, it's CJ from Reliant Horror. I'm with Dan Pinchbeck, the creative director of Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Uh, you also creative director on Machine for Pigs and Dear Esther, correct? Yeah, that's right, yep. Okay, so I just finished playing the game. It is beautiful. First of all, how did you guys manage to do something so visually stunning? It's this beautiful world, and how, how big is it? It's pretty big, actually. We reckon it's, I mean, it, it varies a lot depending on mm. how much you explore. Um, okay. You could probably get through the game in maybe three and a half hours, but you mm. could be in it comfortably for six to seven if you're exploring everything. So that's kind of what we like about it is that it's so responsive to what you do as a player. It's not a linear experience. It's mm. not hand-holding in any way. We really want people to just explore, get lost in it. So you can spend a pretty mm. fair amount of time in there, and the story goes pretty deep, which is was a challenge, but it's been really worth doing. So what do you think about these kind of games, these explorative games, where you go into an environment that's been very lived in, and you just get a story from what you see. You're the observer, and you're not a participator. What do you think about those kind of games? I mean, I think they've been around a lot longer than people think. People yeah. talk about them as being really sort of like new and very, very radical and this kind mm. of stuff. But to me, like when we first started, when we made Dear Esther, I mean, mm. I was looking, I was thinking, well, we're just drawing from System Shock, right. and you know, <laughs> this is Stalker, this is tried yeah. and tested. Um, environmental storytelling and mm. it just comes from that thing of going sometimes you can kind of be in those environments just being in the environments is enough mm -hmm. like Definitely. I talk a lot about um, Dead Space 2 and the return mm. to the Ishimura which is like the best bit of Dead Space yeah. 2 and it's by far the most frightening bit of Dead Space 2 because nothing happens and then when the gameplay kicks back mm. in again you're back out of this kind of mode where you're really feeling it and you're just resource managing and targeting yeah. and things like that and I think when we started off, it really just came from that of going, well, look, this stuff is great, and mm. it works so well, and it's worked for years. What if we just did that? Mm. Um, and I think what's really nice about sort of where we are now is that we can kind of see with, you know, not just games like Rapture, but Adrift, and um, uh, games like that, which are really now taking this thing and going, okay, so we did do kind of corridor-based storytelling games. Mm. We can do all kinds of other stuff now, and it's really starting to change. It feels like it's starting to come together as a genre now rather than being a few isolated experiments here and there. So, so was that a trial for you guys, or a challenge to make such a big open world that you still want to have the story told, but just Yeah, absolutely. Easy. So, I mean, we didn't we didn't want to go back and make Dear Esther 2, and we'd done, I think with, with Machine for Pigs, we felt like we'd done something that was linear, and we'd gone sort of as far as we went with that, and we wanted to try something different. I was playing a lot of open world games at the time, and just, mm. Um, what usually happens is I'll go, hey, I've got a brilliant idea, let's do this. And then Jess kind of like beats some sense into me and then we come up with something in the middle that kind of works. Mm. But we wanted to do something that was much more about you discovering the story. So we wanted to get away from telling a story, get to the point where we're saying, we just want to put you in a world where there's a story and let you find it and make you really have a very, very active part in that. Because even in, in most games where you do have that kind of interaction, when it comes down to the story, you're still kind of told the story. And then you go away and you do a bunch of stuff, mm. and then you're told a bit more story, and then you do a bunch of stuff and you're told a bit more story. And I think we wanted to just say, well, what if we just try and strip all of that telling away and just say, this is really down to what you want to do. And a phrase that we kind of like, we've, we've kind of like used a lot and we've almost had written on the walls is, it's our job to inspire, not to force. You've got to want to go and find the story. And if you don't want to go and find the story, we failed. But what we can't resort to is, is taking you and kind of like forcing the story at you. Um, and that's just a different, it's, it's just a you know, it's a fun way of doing things really. So how would you compare like the length of time it takes versus linear versus an open world where you can just find story bits and then piece them together on your own accord? Um, I, think, I think the open world is the thing that makes this. Okay. Because I think if it was linear, um, one, it kind of gets more you have to be forcing the player down certain routes, and I don't think it could sustain the length of game it is. Because it's the world is so big, and because it's, you've got so much freedom of movement, you can just get lost for a while in it. And um, Jesse's score, which is absolutely amazing yes. and, and outstanding, um, is all tied to a procedural audio system, so we never get to a point where if you've cleared an area, that area's dead. If you go back into that area, the procedural audio system will keep generating music, keep generating kind of like ambience and environment sounds. So you really genuinely can just get lost in it for, for a very long time without it ever running out, which is... How many tracks did you say the game has? Uh, it has, I think it's got upwards of 90 minutes of music well, in total, cool. so there's a, there's a lot of it. Um, and then most of a lot of those tracks are that are based around exploration are split into cellular layers, so the game will actually try and read what's going on, what's happened to you, whether you've just fired a scene, whether one of the moats is close to you, how far through the story you are, and then it'll reassemble that music in different layers as you go through. So you get this kind of 
procedurally, semi-procedurally generated um, dramatic art to it. But what I think is so amazing about what she's done and what Adam, our uh, audio designer, have done is they haven't sacrificed cinematics to get that. So you don't have that kind of like very, very ambient, very unmelodic, I guess, soundtrack. It still sounds like a film soundtrack, even though it's actually being put together on the fly. Yeah, which I, is you, just, you didn't tell me that I wouldn't have known that it was procedurally generated. I was just, it just seems so natural. It's just it's very, incredible. Very nice. It's kind of mixed between going like pure procedurality and, and purely scripted. We're going somewhere in the middle, actually. There's this really great mm. spot there where we can do something really special. So, I remember, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys said that this game wouldn't be, couldn't be made without Sony. You guys would have, were afraid to do crowdsourcing or something like that. So how did it, how did that partnership come to be? Did you reach out to them? They reach out to you? Yeah, we did. Um, we, we figured out that we, when we wanted to make it, we looked at the game and we'd, we'd done a bit of prototyping for a few months and we knew we were, the, the scale of it was starting to dawn. And we kind of thought it's not just about kind of like the team size we'll need, but also about production support. We'd never done something on this scale. And we really thought just be, be modest, not modest, but don't, don't be arrogant about this. Know where you are as a studio, know you're still growing. We could, we could do with working with someone. So Jess and I sat down and we went, okay, right, we'll write a list of the publishers that we could potentially work with on this title. And we sat down and we wrote Sony Santa Monica at the top of a piece of paper. And then there was a long pause and we went, okay, we'll go away and think about that. And a week later, it just had Sony Santa Monica written at the top of it still. So we dropped to an email, threw all the eggs in one basket and pitched it to them. And fortunately, they liked it. So, yeah. That's good. Um, I'd be remiss not to ask. Uh, a lot of people are concerned or still wondering if the state, if the game will ever come to PC or something like that. I know we're under a blue light right now in the study booth, but just, just if people want to know if the possibility exists. Good, shrugs, yeah. shrug. It's, <laughs> technically it exists. Okay, that's good. In terms of design, it exists. Mm -hmm. In terms of everything else, if Sony wanted to put it on PC, it would all be ready to go, and obviously, we came out of the PC market. We're very aware that we've got really right. dedicated fans that are PC gamers. And I think the only thing that we've, we tried to say to them, and I'd sort of say again is, it really was a choice of make the game or don't make the yeah, game. And if there was a way that, that we could, you know, have brought it onto PC at the same time, I think we're all still PC gamers. So, you know, fingers crossed, I hope one day we'll, we'll be able to get out on PC. Uh, so, I want to ask, what did the, I know that you have the PlayStation Move, not Move, sorry, the DualShock 4 has support where you twist it. Is there anything else like that in the game? No, we tried to keep the mechanics really, really simple. Okay. So we, we started off, we had a few more things in there, like the, the, the tilts were tied to a mm. bit more of a puzzle mechanic, that oh, they get okay. progressively more difficult in the Dr. My 3D space. And then when we started doing playtesting, the consistent feedback we got back from people was we just want to get to the story. And actually it felt like we were just artificially putting things oh, in yeah. the way of the player just for the sake of having a mechanic. And we've kind of always gone, only use mechanics if you require a mechanic. And I think it's, it's something that, you know, we're still growing as a studio in terms of like, how we use mechanics and how we understand them. And we don't come from a traditional kind of game design background. So it's something that we're still on that kind of like that, that learning journey. But we definitely, when we got to this step, we really want to do everything we can to make you feel like you are in the world and to take away any barriers to that kind of sense of, of, of immersion that we can. Okay. You mentioned earlier they had four artists. So can you tell me how big the team is? Because that's incredibly impressive. Yeah, so the, at, at, at the most, uh, we had, um, I think we had six artists six. for a while at one point, but the mm. core has been four all the way through. Wow. Um, we've had a few freelancers supporting here and there, but the team size has generally hovered around 14, 15. Wow. Which is really, I mean, I, the game is the testament to their talent yes, and their passion. I mean, they're really extraordinary team. We're so lucky to work with them. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, so that's, the, that's I guess the end of our Rapture questions, but I have one more. Okay. This is from the PC fan base. They want to know if Corsicovia is ever going to be revisited, maybe get the Dear Esther treatment. I actually tried to get Corsicovia working last week, and it's so <laughs> broken. Um, I, Corsicovia has a special place in my heart. It's completely insane, and it's awful. And half of it is great, and half yeah, of it's Yeah, I've heard you terrible. have the issues with the mechanics, um, yeah. But there's something about it that I still kind of like have a bit of a soft spot for. Maybe one day. I think it's probably quite likely that what will happen is we'll hack it up into lumps and then raid the bits of it that worked. Oh. Um, and I've got a few ideas about what we're doing next that I think might pull in aspects of Corsica over and bits of it, but oh, no. yeah. That sounds fantastic. Cool. Thank All you. right, thank you. Great, thank you very much. <laughs>